Out of all the different supplement companies in the world, uh, why choose Longevity? Why take Longevity supplements? Well, you know, let's let's be honest and frank about it. All right. First of all, Dr. Glidden gets. I am not financially linked to the Longevity company. I'm not a Longevity distributor. Longevity doesn't give me direct checks from commission sales from any of the nutritional supplements. Um, I support Longevity's mission, and I'll go around the country lecturing for Longevity, and I get a small lecturing fee in order to do that. But I am completely out of the loop with the uh, commission or vitamin sales from Longevity. So the information that I'm giving to people is not to, uh, in, in full disclosure, I, I'm, I don't have, uh, I don't make any money from the vitamin sales in Longevity. Okay, so number one, number two. Last year, in the United States, we spent something like seventy billion dollars on vitamins and nutritional supplements, and everybody's still sick. What's going on? Well, here's what's going on. When it comes to vitamins and nutritional supplements, the recipe is everything. Vitamins are like chicken soup, right? Now, my grandmother's chicken soup was quite a bit better than the chicken soup in the can at the supermarket. Well, what's the difference? Well, the recipe's the difference, right? The freshness of the ingredients, the amount of the ingredients, the actual ingredients themselves. Was it carrots and asparagus or was there no asparagus and how much salt and how much seasoning and all these variables, right, go into making that one most excellent uh, bowl of chicken soup or really not so much. Right? It's no different with vitamins. When it comes to vitamins or nutritional supplements, the recipe is everything. And, it, it, and with vitamins and nutritional supplements, not only is the actual formulation, you know, how much calcium, how much vitamin C, what are the cofactors, uh, and what molecular form is it in, and is it bioavailable, or is it hard for the body to digest, is it easy for the body to digest, is it in a liquid form, is it in a capsule form, is it in a hard pressed tablet that's shellacked, I mean all of these variables go into making the product, once the recipe has been formulated, easy or difficult for your body even to digest and break down. And the vitamin company that makes the stuff has to have a certain amount of quality control in place in order to assure that there's actually vitamin C in there. And it's actually 500 milligrams of vitamin C per dose like the label claims it to be. Now, you know, from the person who extracts the vitamin C from the orange in Hawaii to the person that actually puts the powdered extracted vitamin C in the capsule, in the bottle, there is this supply chain. And anywhere along that supply chain, something can go wrong. You know, it can be mislabeled or it can be stored in a boxcar in Texas somewhere where it's 200 degrees and it's all become degraded or it's become contaminated, or it was shipped in the wrong container, or the vitamin company, you know, misplaced the stuff. So instead of putting the vitamin C into the capsule, they actually put calcium. So all of these variables just in the supply side uh, can go wrong. And so in order for a company to have an effective nutritional supplement, they have to have a quality control system in place that regulates the supply chain of their raw materials, number one. Number two, they have to have good recipes, right? They have, have to, it has this much vitamin C and this much calcium and it's in a particular molecular form and, and then it's in a liquid supplement or it's in a gel cap that's easy for your body to digest. And when you have all of these variables taken care of, then the effectiveness of this particular nutritional supplement increases dramatically. And this is the fundamental difference in quality. It's a quality control issue and a recipe issue. Now, Longevity's stuff, the Longevity company has the quality control stuff handled. They have their quality control is uh, some of the best that I've seen in the industry and that their supply chain is taken care of and the laboratories that they use in order to uh, give them second uh, party uh, documentation that, that this really is vitamin C in this, you know, in this raw material, they've taken care of all of that. 
So that's a very good thing. But the biggest variable that separates the longevity family of nutritional supplements from everybody else's is the recipe. And longevity's recipes are formed from $25 million of federally funded research, 10,000 autopsies, 10 million blood chemistries and histopathologies that Longevity's founder, Dr. Joel Wallach, did. And when you do that much pragmatic boots on the ground research, it's, nobody does that, number one, anymore. And number two, when you have all of that information available and you marry that with 30 plus years of clinical experience by a licensed holistic physician, a licensed naturopathic physician, those recipes, those formulas are going to be way more effective than anybody else's. It just comes down to experience and recipe and quality control. And there's no other company in the world that has that perfect trifecta of combination. That's why Longevity Supplements I recommend wholeheartedly now above any, anybody else's because their quality control is excellent and their recipes are informed by um, millions of dollars of federally funded research and decades of clinical experience by one of the most lauded, experienced naturopathic physicians in the world. And that's just, uh, you know, that's the perfect storm. It's really interesting that, that you talk about um, the ingredients because I used to take all kinds of supplements and, and I still was getting sick and I thought that calcium was calcium was calcium. I thought, you know, it doesn't matter if it's calcium citrate or, or calcium carbonate. Yeah, well, <laughs> like the fella said, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And in the wonderful world of the kind of um, biochemistry of vitamins and nutritional supplements, there's, there are many finer points, right? And when you take all of these finer points into consideration, the actual finished product that you have will be much more absorbable. And when we talk about calcium, for example, uh, calcium carbonate, <clears throat> let's say you get a supplement at the health food store that says calcium carbonate, 500 milligrams per capsule. Well, as it turns out, in one 500 milligram capsule of calcium carbonate, you are lucky if you get 30 milligrams of bioavailable calcium, wow. right? So in order to meet the RDA, which is 1200 milligrams of calcium, with that particular supplement, you would need to swallow 40 capsules a day. Now, most people think they only need three because it says right there, 500 milligrams per cap. But actually what you assimilate out of that 500 milligrams because of the recipe is 30 milligrams if you're lucky. And that's, you know, that's a liberal estimate. It's probably more like 10 or 15 or 20. So... However, when you have a knowledge base which informs you about these finer points and you put them into practice in the generation of your particular recipe, then this calcium supplement is going to be unbelievably absorbable and effective and this one is just going to be unbelievably poor and ineffective. But because medicine is dominated by the pharmaceutical industry, and because very few people have um, access to this information in a pragmatic way, and you know because of the, the profit motive that exists here in the country with the dissemination of uh, health care, uh, these finer points are overlooked and neglected, and that's why everybody in this country is suffering, because we're just taking the wrong stuff, or we're not taking nearly enough of it. Or what's worse is we're taking vitamins and nutritional supplements the same way we were taking drugs. We're taking them in delivered in a reductionistic method, right? So, you know, the MD is trained in reductionistic medicine. The naturopath is trained in holistic medicine. And they couldn't be further apart. They're like night and day, positive and negative, left and right. Reductionism argues that the body is a machine. It's like a, a machine made of parts. And when somebody's sick, that machine has to be taken apart into each piece and each piece of the body given to medicine. And when you give medicines, you give one medicine at a time. So instead of giving a holistic recipe of all of the nutrients that the human body needs, the reductionistic MD will give lots of calcium or lots of vitamin C 
or lots of vitamin D, or lots of fish oil. I mean, mega doses. I mean, IV drips of the stuff, right? Because they're articulating the delivery of the vitamin through a reductionistic method, and this is why they fail. Because it's not really the medicine or the vitamin, it's how it's delivered. You know, I don't have anything against drugs. I can prescribe drugs, and there's nothing wrong with drugs. Drugs are like guns. Nothing wrong with guns, it's how they're used. Well, there's nothing wrong with drugs, it's how they're used. How MDs use drugs is the leading, leads to the leading cause of death in the United States because they use these medicines inappropriately and ineffectively through their reductionistic lens. And they, they do the same thing with vitamins. However, when you stop all of that nonsense and actually deliver high quality nutritional supplements with very sophisticated recipes in a holistic manner, your body responds like never before. And this is why, since I've been following Dr. Wallach's method and using the longevity family of nutritional supplements with my patients, I don't even know what planet I'm on anymore because the results that I've seen with Dr. Wallach's therapeutics, Dr. Wallach's recipes, and Dr. Wallach's methods eclipse anything that I had previously seen. Why is this? Because of the recipe and because of the experience and because of the sophistication. So this brings me to a really interesting question that I've had uh, several people ask me and, and they, they say, well, you know, I think I'm healthy. I don't, I don't think I need to take supplements because I think I'm already healthy. What do you say to that? Well, it's just patently wrong and that's just, you know, a manifestation or uh, an example of bad education and, you know, that's the, the, the educational system's fault. Um, here's the thing. And I just saw this on TV the other day. You know, I saw there was a, a, a commercial for Bayer Aspirin. And the person on the commercial said, I was a marathoner and in perfect health, and then I suffered from a heart attack. And then they went on to say why Bayer Aspirin, you know, they don't actually say why they're taking Bayer Aspirin, because aspirin is completely ineffective at any type of um, helping you with any type of cardiovascular health. It's just the wrong way to do it. It's a very juvenile um, attempt at securing cardiovascular health. But the point is, we have become so, our education here has become so dumbed down that we can actually say in one sentence that I was perfectly healthy and then say, but then I got a heart attack. Well, by definition, you got a heart attack because you were not healthy, right? right? But we have separated these things in our culture. We, we don't think that arthritis or type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure or a heart attack is the result of poor health. We think it's something that happens to us, you know, because of a bad gene or because we were exposed to a, a petrochemical or genetically modified corn. But it's not. If you have a symptom, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a skin rash or a funky heartbeat or high blood pressure or joint pain or if you have a symptom anywhere in your body, it is an indication that your body is not healthy. A healthy system, a healthy biological human body is 100% symptom free. If you have any symptom whatsoever, by definition you are not healthy, number one, and number two, in order to maintain the health of the human body, your body needs essential nutrients. And essential nutrients are called essential because your body cannot make them. Essential nutrients must be imported into the body every day. This is one of the reasons why we need to eat food. We need to eat food for calories, for energy to burn, for fat and for protein, but we also need uh, food in order to secure the 90 essential nutrients. But it is impossible. This is why when you stop eating, you die. Because your body runs out of the essential nutrients that it needs to maintain its health. But it is impossible to secure all of the nutrients that the body needs to stay healthy just from eating from food. You can't do it. So it's just miseducation. You know, 
there are things that we have gotten so accustomed to that we don't think about them anymore. For instance, in order to survive on planet Earth, we have to build houses, live in them, heat them and cool them, protect ourselves from the elements, right? Even the Native Americans had to live in something, teepees and wigwams. We need to protect ourselves from the elements, number one. Number two, we need to find and purify water. If we do not find and purify water, we're going to die, which is why they're dying from cholera now in Haiti, because there's no more clean water. But we've had clean water here for hundreds of years. We don't even think about it anymore. We just do it automatically. And the third thing that we need to do to survive on planet Earth is we need to develop a waste elimination system, right? And every town in the United States have this. They don't have this in India. They don't have waste elimination systems everywhere in India. It's a big bad deal in some of those, in some of those uh, towns in India. But in the United States, we don't even think about it because we have sewage treatment plants everywhere. It's just a normal part of life. There's one more thing that we need to do that nobody is doing and nobody is teaching. And this is why everybody gets sick and dies. In addition to living in houses that are heated and cooled, finding and purifying water, and uh, de uh, delivering uh, or, or coming up with a waste elimination system, we need to scour the planet, secure the 90 essential nutrients, put them together in bioavailable recipes and swallow them every day. If you do not supplement your diet with the essential nutrients that your body needs, it is only a matter of time until your body runs out of something, then something breaks, and then you go to an MD who's completely blind about anything having to do with medical nutrition, and they will tell you that your problem is the result of genetics, or they will tell you your problem is the result of aging, or they will tell you we have no idea what caused this problem, and then they throw a drug at it. You cannot fix a nutrient deficiency disease with a drug. And so in order to optimize your health, especially if you're symptom free, and I've never met anybody in my life that's completely symptom free. If you have insomnia, you're not symptom free. If you have a funny skin rash, you're not symptom free. If you have any ache or pain anywhere in your body, you are not symptom free. If you're overweight, you are not symptom free. If you have high blood pressure, you are not symptom free. Whatever it is, anxiety and panic attacks, bad menstrual cramps, uh, funky periods, so you get your period in, in March, you get two periods in March, and then you don't get any in April, and then you get three in May, and then you don't get any in June, and then you're okay for July, August, and September. You have an erratic menstrual cycle, you're not healthy. But we haven't been educated about this. We haven't been taught this. We think that illness is something that happens to us instead of something that happens because of us. And there's a giant difference in those two perceptions. In order to be healthy, you must secure the essential nutrients and swallow them every day. If you don't do that, it is just a matter of time until something breaks. It's that simple.